What's up, Doomers? Welcome back. It's July 5th. Hope you didn't blow your fingers off yesterday. It's a humid 82 degrees here in New York. Feels like 87. This is my second take explaining how I got here in a state forest off-grid in 2024. It all began eight years ago, and I don't want you to think that I'm a narcissist, that I have some divine understanding no, it's pretty common knowledge now. All of this information is open access, peer-reviewed, and readily available to the public. It just takes a little time, reading, critical thinking. Some Americans got that. So like I said, eight years ago in 2016, I was wrapping up a long-term relationship, going back to college at the same time, stressful, and I enrolled in English Composition Writing 201, which is the next level up from 101, and also Geology 101 at the same time. It just seemed like that was the way to go. I was pursuing a degree in Journalism and minor in Ecology of some sorts. It was like fate. My English professor thought it was a good idea to provide the class as means to inform rather than to entertain was the IPCC fifth assessment in 2016. Trump had just been elected. We withdrew from the Paris Climate Accord and it seems like the world was flying out of control back then. Still is. But I kept my nose to the books and studied the data and the information and I was shocked, stunned, in denial, like a flashbang going off. I didn't know I was a concu concussion. I didn't know how to take this information, what to do, what the first steps were. Like many people coming to this channel or learning about this information for the first time. I think it's pretty common knowledge now. It's all over the mainstream media. Everyone feels it. No matter if you're from Serbia to Australia and Japan, China. doesn't matter. This is a worldwide phenomenon of rising greenhouse gases equating to rising global temperatures and all the knock-on effects of this. But again, it took me a few years to come around to this information, to really let it soak in. I was on the back burner of it for a while. I just kind of compartmentalized it. Okay, that's there, but I can make steps. I can continue my journey to becoming a professional journalist writing for Wired Magazine or National Geographic, driving a Tesla, living in San Francisco, having an attractive partner, saving for retirement, looking forward to a great future. Except that's all wrong. None of that is true. We aren't changing course. We are toast. Are you watching Dr. Glibs? We're done. And the faster that you reach acceptance, and we'll talk about this grief cycle for a moment, you start off in denial most of the time, then you ride this roller coaster up into depression, anger. It's a roller coaster. And that's what I went on for several years, bouncing it back in my head what I was supposed to do. What can I do? You know, what can we do? Excuse the bugs and the birds, I have no control over nature. It was around this time, a few years later, 2019, 2020, that. I started getting heavily involved in content regarding this subject and watching videos from people who could parse this information and make it easy to understand. You guys know who I'm talking about and gals. I can say the names, but you know who they are. And I was watching them heavily, you know, binge watching like crazy. It dawned on me like any sensible person would that we are done and we aren't changing course and nothing I could do would change anything. So around 2020, I need to get on a platform and I need to yell about this as loud as humanly possible to say that I at least said something, maybe spark some kind of change as a ancillary to that. And you know, this, this is the crisis of our lifetimes, you know, kiss our retirement goodbye. Forget about Social Security, home ownership, property rates of insurance, skyrocketing food, mass migration, everything I read about in 2016. And again, this professor provided it, the English professor, as an intent to let us 
be educated and informed rather than entertained. She was said specifically, I want you to read this to see what a scientific paper looks like, given how much money is behind it. You know, it's actually way worse than they were describing back then. You know, all of the most recent data and peer-reviewed stuff that comes out suggests, and it takes years to come out, suggests that it's getting worse faster than expected. So I broke down and I was in depression and anger for at least a year doing crazy things. And I was in Dallas, Texas, a metropolis of over a million people. I was um, yelling at people at cafes, stopping traffic. Uh, I was on a tirade. You know what I mean? I was in my late 20s. I was on fire. You know, not having it. My future, all of my friends, it was a death sentence. In hindsight, it was a whole lot of hot air. Okay, obviously. So, I knew that if we were to go into a Mad Max, end of the world situation, I definitely wouldn't want to be in a highly populated area like any major city nowadays. So I moved to a small town, and there I met one of my best friends for life, David Jenkins. His wife and I sat down and talked about this for hours throughout 2021 and 2022. And we kept going in circles. Nothing that we proposed would solve it. Not injecting aerosols, stopping carbon emissions, painting rooftops white. We're an overshoot, okay? We're a heat engine civilization. We just produce heat no matter what energy source. There's just all this talk on mainstream media about building all these new solar panels and global transition. How are we going to get all that stuff over there? What is the primary mode of transportation that we use now? How are we going to phase out coal? It's increasing, okay? Just a little bit of common sense, you know, and some friends to put you in check. Check yourself before you wreck yourself that we're effed and still depressed about it. It wasn't really until I moved with another acquaintance to Ohio in 2023 that of all people, I guess maybe his age helped a little bit, having a perspective that we're done. No changing course, okay? And you could say, well, you're still not going to survive. I know that. Unless you're a billionaire with a bunker, and even then your your security would turn on you. You know, you would last a few months, maybe, when supply lines get shut down, 18-wheelers stop, we run out of fuel, a world war st starts, some country launches a nuke, it happens to get across our barriers, and it hits San Francisco or Seattle. doesn't matter. Pentagon. You know, not just America and Cuba, South America. You know, this is a poly crisis. It is one... I don't need to explain that shit to you. You get it. It's collapse. So, maybe it's inconvenient to be ahead of your time. I'm speaking of the world a few years out. But all the data and evidence that's peer-reviewed and open access is readily available for you to read... And much of it is parsed by some intelligent people across the world that you can read on Medium and uh, watch videos on. So this has been an eight-year journey into collapse awareness and eventually acceptance. I'm glad. I'm glad I know so I can plan my life accordingly. So I cannot sweat the little stuff and not save up for a future that isn't there. Waste my resources when money is going to be obsolete in 10 years. When heat waves are going to be killing billions of people. You know all those Muslims that died on their way to that box for a man-made social construct. Aren't we all working for it? Money. My advice is if you're getting in this for the first time is to find a community. This is heavy information. And it's not like, if you're rational or even somewhat sane, and you take this information, you can't, if you're not thoroughly 
freak the fuck out, then you're not understanding the information correctly. There's no outcome out of this that ends well. Okay? So just being blunt and clear-headed about this is to uh, live now and enjoy the company of those around you. Okay? Once we discovered fossil fuels, how to extract this energy source and refine it, our fate was sealed. So I thank you for coming on this journey with me. I plan on producing a collapse in economy wrap up every other couple days maybe. And just journal this. You know, I watch other channels about this subject now. Where I'm at mentally, as if you've been following me over the years, is, you know, peace. I'm at peace. And that's worth more than money can count. Compared to where I was a few years ago, very mentally ill, living in a city, dealing with this existential crisis, alone. Find a community. There are many groups online, and I condone social media, but if you need to, go to these places, talk with other people. The worst feeling is feeling like you're the only one that's processing this, that you're the only one that feels this way. Because I assure you by this point, you're definitely not. All right, realists, it's been good. Just wanted to do a little rambling on my life and tell you I enjoy you guys with me. I'll talk to you soon. See ya.